is really India's moment. 7% growth, some say sustainable. It is on the verge of overtaking the likes of Germany, Japan, to be the third largest economy in the world. What opportunities do you see? We see tremendous opportunity. And uh, I've in fact gone on record to say next year will be 8% growth. <laughs> uh, as the momentum is very strong, and this is, I would say, many years of activity that is starting to translate into uh, real growth numbers that will be beneficial for the economy. We operate in about 70% of what we would look at India's growth over the next decade. And uh, we're looking at exponential growth across all our businesses today, uh, from electric vehicles to commercial vehicles, tractors, IT services, financial services, hospitality, real estate, logistics, renewables. And uh, there's a huge amount of opportunity for us there. Some suggesting that India is benefiting from a slowing China. What if China gets gets its act together, can India still sustain the kind of growth and optimism and enthusiasm among investors? I would say that India has earned the right to be on the global stage uh, because India offers a lot. Uh, rule of law, the ability for companies to come in, IP protected, uh, infrastructure in the past had questions. A lot of that has been addressed now. Ease of doing business has been addressed. In all our conversations uh, with the central government, there's a huge focus on ensuring that uh, the economy comes comes first and that all roadblocks are removed for companies investing in India. And uh, that's the place we want to be. Hmm. You, know, you unveiled, let's get to uh, electric vehicles, the business you're betting big on. You unveiled five SUVs, I think back in 2022. When are you planning to launch? Because there's great excitement. There's a lot of people waiting for, for the launch. So we had promised launch in December 24. We are on track, slightly ahead of track, in fact, on that. Uh, I've driven three of the five, and uh, they've come out really well. So we're looking forward to that launch. And in terms of demand, what are you anticipating? Uh, we're an anticipating very significant demand. Uh, it will be initially in a pocket of folks who can charge at home um, and potentially some who may have a second car because electric will take some time to become mainstream and then it will just take off from there. The vehicle is going to be far better than any of the ICE vehicles in the industry. But and, it all uh, depends on the infrastructure that can be put in place. Yes, and therefore, it will have to be a stepwise process. So as more vehicles come on the road, infrastructure will expand as well. Uh, and therefore, I said, it starts with charging at home because that's easy to put in. And uh, once you have a critical mass there, the investments in infrastructure will only multiply. You're seeing a lot of competition. Will you go beyond the five models that you're planning to launch? Uh, we have been talking about a sixth one that uh, we've shown as well, which is sort of a variant of one of the five. And uh, yes, we will continue to be aggressive on this front. Uh, uh, we have seen a lot of competition in India and the auto industry over the last 25 years. We've gotten a lot better as a result of that. And uh, we're number one in SUVs today in terms of uh, revenue market share. And that just uh, shows how we can get better with competition. But in terms of EV sales, though, you're lagging behind your big rival like Tata Motors. What is the strategy to perhaps play catch up? See, for us, the choice we made was to leapfrog into born electric SUVs. So we have one SUV on the road today, but we did not want to really put a lot of effort behind adaptations of ICE cars. Uh, so this is going to be a game changer. And uh, that is, is really going to help us gain leadership in the EV space. What will be a game changer is price. How low can you price your SUVs, your EVs, so that more people can have access to it? Uh, all I would say at this point is that it will be attractive. <laughs> Give us a range, give us a range. You need to stay tuned for that. We shall come back with that at the right time when we launch the vehicles. Uh, so all I would say at this point in time, it will be attractive. Uh, Dr. Shah, you talked about how the Indian economy is doing really well. How are you investing in, in your businesses? What are, you, what are your priorities for 2024? So our priorities really are continued execution. We've seen great momentum in the last three years. And uh, we've got our businesses on a very good track. Our four, four large businesses, Auto, Farm, Tech Mahindra, and Mahindra Finance, uh, are all positioned very well. Auto and Farm have great market leadership they're capitalizing on. Tech Mahindra, Mahindra Finance are going through a turnaround and uh, will come out of it very strongly. And beyond that, we have our 10 growth gems. These are businesses we are betting on with exponential growth. Our target is to grow them 5x in the next five to seven years. Uh, 
a couple of them are very well on track and I've started to show that already. Others have a great plan in place and, and we'll get there. Uh, so across the Indian industry, uh, we've got a very good set of businesses uh, and we've got great uh, partners in terms of marquee investors who've come in. Uh, over Such the last, as? Uh, we've got British International and Temasek into our EV business. IFC and uh, the India Japan Fund by NIF have come into electric three-wheeler business. Ontario Teachers has come into our sustain or renewables business. So we've got uh, a great set of global investors who've come in and uh, they want to do a lot more with us across multiple businesses. Will that growth translate to more hiring for the year and the next? Yes, that will translate to more hiring, um, more revenue, more profits, all of that. Could you quantify that? Uh, at this point, I would say each business will have a different model. So in holidays, for example, uh, we're looking at uh, growing 5x. Uh, so we have a 100 resorts right now. We've got 5,000 keys in India. In terms of keys, we want to grow to 15,000 keys and then translate that from a revenue standpoint will be a 5x jump. Uh, in terms of our life spaces, a real estate business, uh, we're looking at getting sales up between 5 and 8x over the next few years. So each business will have a different set based on its growth projections. So I'd say tougher to give a number at an aggregate level, uh, but on balance, I'd just say that we are in a rapid growth mode at this point. The Davos crowd is currently obsessed with AI. Is it overhyped? And how do you see AI disrupting your businesses? Uh, I'd say AI is overhyped for the short run, uh, but it has a lot of potential in the longer run. This really comes back to practical applications. Right? And as we've gone through various different cycles in technology, we've talked about meta, we've talked about um, blockchain. I mean, there are a whole host of things that were, you know, the next thing that's going to change the world. Um, and today, AI is the next thing that's going to change the world. So we do feel that it will have a significant impact, uh, but it really comes down to what are the use cases and how can we make that real from a productivity standpoint. And uh, much of that work has to be done. Some say that AI will mean job losses for 40% of the workforce currently. How are you ensuring that your workers are skilled enough to, to counter that risk? In, in technology, we've gone through so many waves. Right? When the internet came, uh, it was a complete game changer. Right? I remember going to an airport at one point and finding these kiosks and not having someone check me in. Uh, so we've seen job losses in many areas, but we found new opportunities. That's what we do as a human race, and that's how we grow. So yes, we will evolve. We will have different uh, jobs taken by technology, but we will find new areas of growth for us.